A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, over all these things put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. In whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, do from the heart, as for the Lord and not for men knowing that you will receive from the Lord the due payment of the inheritance. Be slaves of the Lord Jesus. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Before the mountains were begotten, and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants, and your glory by their children. Fabiscum et un spiritu tuo. Lexia Sancti Evangelii secundum Matteum. Gloria ti et omine. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom? and mighty deeds. Is he not the carpenter's son? Is he is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. Verbum Domini. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Joseph the Worker, a day instituted. I think by the church, I think it was in 1955, that is to be dedicated to the dignity of labor and uh, to honoring workers. We know one of the options 
for the readings today was to choose from the creation account in Genesis. And there we see in Genesis 2.15 that the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till and keep it. So man made in the image and likeness of God has this duty to, in a sense, prolong the, the creative work of God, right? The work of creation which is spoken of in the scriptures that God performed. That man in his dominion, being made in the image and likeness of God, shares in this uh, dominion that he has given the earth. God, of course, creates out of nothingness. Man made in the image of God develops the garden, right? He exercises that dominion. Remember, all the creatures are brought to Adam. He names them. He is the high point of visible creation. So he cultivates, tends the garden, builds, fashion, develops things. And even in the sense of a culture, right, grows up around man. We see that in human history. All that he uh, loves and cherishes, believes in, right, those values, motivations he holds, transforms the world around him. Right, in a, in a, I mean, sometimes in a fallen way, sometimes in a very beautiful way. Animals do not do this, but man, being a personal being, does this. He develops what's already there, and he has to have respect for that creation, its, its own laws, respect the harmony of God's uh, creative order. And if he does that, it can bring a, a beautiful flourishing. You know, we can see a beautiful flourishing in his work. And also, so he develops the world, and also, as the church teaching makes clear, that he develops himself as a person, right? This is his role, to exercise his dominion, to cultivate until it's command of God, so he can express his creativity. He can use his work as an instrument of love, where he can serve the family and others. He can, you know, grow in so many natural virtues, you know, putting forth just effort and discipline, having accountability for his work and his job, you know, being responsible for something. And you can see that, you know, as a person works, it's part of his maturity as he can serve others, you know, get out of himself and be concerned about the world around him and others in the world. You might be thinking, you know, Father Mark, what planet are you on? You know, <laughs> I get up and I go to work sometimes a long commute, work with difficult people. I'm not exactly uh, leaping and bounding as I go to my desk every morning. And we know in Genesis 3.15, a chapter later, we hear about the fall, right? The curses that happen as a result of the fall of Adam and Eve, where they commit the original sin. And the ground, the very ground is cursed, right? In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. By the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread. There's this, no doubt, a fallen aspect of labor, of work. But it's not destroyed. There's still an essential goodness. This uh, creative value, this creative work that we can do has value, of course. But toil is introduced. Difficulty, right? At times it seems the very earth rebels against us and we know all the difficulties in working together as well. And toil is part of the remedy for sin, right? It, it limits us, it helps us from making an idol of work. You know, a few of us at the end of life say, well, I wish I spent more time at the office, right? <laughs> the difficulties there can help slow us down a little bit, grasping this as an idol, although we still do in our workaholism and things. Uh, but it helps to limit us. Through the incarnation, Jesus has taken on human nature, right? He's joined himself in a mysterious way to every man, as Vatican II says. And his humanity, united with his divinity, is the efficacious instrument of our salvation, right? That his human actions were salvific for us, it causes grace within us, you know, grace merited by him and, and given to us. And today we're told in the, in the gospel very simply that, you know, isn't he the carpenter's son? You know, where does he get all this wisdom? He's the carpenter's son. He comes from a very humble background. St. Joseph was, did manual labor. And uh, Mary is his mother, we're told. This month of May is dedicated to Mary. And we exercise that devotion and, and call her to assist us with her prayers and our work. 
But we see that Jesus came from a human family. He sanctified the family. He sanctified work. He lived a hidden life. He lived to be 33. He lived a hidden life for 30 years. He worked and lived in a family. And his, he's the instrument that humanity, that work and everything is that instrument of our salvation. So he sanctifies it. He makes it holy. Three years public ministry, 30 years and work in the family. So all of daily life is sanctified. Sanctified by Christ and his work and his paschal mystery, his cross, the work of redemption. So this toil aspect, the difficulties that we encounter can be taken up into the cross, Jesus' cross, and become, and becomes redemptive. He's redeemed that toil aspect of labor. So we can offer it up to the Lord and it can be meritorious for us and others. And St. Joseph, of course, is the model for us. We see in the Gospels, he's silent. And this speaks of his deep interior life, right? His contemplative, uh, his contemplative life that he led in the Holy Family, all the while working. But there's something about his presence in the scriptures that you can feel the weight and the depth of his character. Right, that he's, he's ready to do God's will. Right? He has a dream and he takes the, the mother and the child right into Egypt to protect them or takes them to Bethlehem for the census and things. He's ready to do what he has to do. And we see his virtue gives a great facility to that. Right? It makes him ready to respond. His devotion, his interior life to God makes him very ready to do God's will. And as this lofty interior life in the spiritual calling, right, to be the father of Jesus, and he is a carpenter, we're told, right? He works with his hands. He does manual labor. He serves uh, the Holy Family in humility. What a model for us, right, that God comes first, and our work needs to be ordered to God's kingdom, right, to gospel values. I recently came across a... A C.S. Lewis uh, quote that I like that I think parallels the second reading today from Colossians that we're to do all in the name of the Lord, right? Whatever you do, do from the heart as for the Lord and not for men, right? That the kingdom is placed first and, and guides our work. C.S. Lewis writes that if you look at history, you'll find that the Christians who did most for the present world were precise precisely those who thought most of the next, right? The fullness of the kingdom, that we're preparing the way for that coming of the kingdom. And if we have our mind and heart set on that fullness in God, it also motivates us to do good work here, right? To work hard, to, to put these gospel values in our work. So we prepare the way for this total renewal, this total transformation brought about by Christ. And in Colossians, we have the very practical advice to put on peace, you know, to have peace in your heart, to have love, put on peace and love in whatever you do, right? Take that into the office, take that into your work, you know, doing so uh, for the Lord Jesus. Called in one body, right? That we're all called to use all our talents, gifts, efforts to serve the mystical body, to serve uh, one another, to serve the entire body. So our motivation is seeking God's will in all things in our life, and of course this includes work. And one of the most important practical tips from Colossians that I like, he says, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I think this is a wonderful way to give thanks, to sanctify our day and our work. When we give thanks to God, it, it brings us back to center on him in our life. And it's an easy little prayer that we can say every day. It's an easy practice to, you do, to do, to thank God for this opportunity, to thank God for this talent maybe I have, to thank God for a coworker or some act of kindness done for me today. And this unites us with Christ, right? It brings the, it, you know, points the ship again in the right direction towards Christ and his kingdom. And we can do this continually throughout the day. Most of us, have so many blessings in our life, right? And, and we forget that, and we can 
spin off into our isolation and cynicism, pessimism at times, to thank God, you know, continually, really, throughout the day, you know, fosters this, I think, a new generosity in us and a, a connection, a real connection with God as a source of all our strength and energy. Our work, our life has meaning and value, right? We're doing it for the Lord. We're connected to Him. We have union with Him. We're drawing our strength, our patience, our effort from Him. And that attitude of gratitude uh, helps us to do that.